Good morning to each and every one of you. Uh, I thought we were having a downturn for a little bit. We have a few members that are not here. I don't know if they stayed home to pray for the chiefs or what. <laughs> but I hope it's something that's at least a little religious because <laughs> it should be a secondary thing. Uh, but uh, we're, we're going to uh, start off our worship time welcoming those of you who are online and uh, in asking you to watch for... That needs to be turned on. Uh, need to watch. We, we have a cheat sheet down here in the form of a monitor, and when it's off, it really is difficult to do the song service. Uh, we're uh, glad to welcome everyone that's online. You're welcome to use the things that are online to contact us. Use your phone in church to text us with what you have as a question or a need or anything like that, and we'll be glad to get back with you and, and visit with you, set a time to visit, however it, it comes out working. We'll just be really glad to do that. Uh, we want to welcome our guests this morning. We have them in profusion, <laughs> and it's great. We, we're glad to have you here. There will be a call for a children's worship time. They want it all to stay in. They want it all to stay in. Yeah. Trust me. <laughs> I'm the one that's preaching. <laughs> They're not going to be real interested. <laughs> uh, but that, that's fine. That's just, just real fine. Uh, we're at this point in time, we need to have, uh, we're going to sing our first song. We're going to sing a verse of America as a prayer to God for our land. When we finish that, our elders need to have assembled down here. And uh, we're going to have a, a word of prayer. So while we're singing this, elders, make your way down right now, please. Our fathers, God, to thee, author of liberty, to thee we sing. Long may our land be bright with freedom's holy light. Protect us by thy might, great God our King. If you gentlemen would step up, I, I would just comment this. We believe in prayer. We believe that Doctors can help in the healing process, but we believe ultimately everything rests in our Heavenly Father's hands. And uh, Doug's having a surgery this week, and uh, he's one of the elders. But uh, in this case, we're just going to have a word of prayer over him, ask God's blessing on him as he goes through this surgery. Carol, would you, would you leave? Lord, we come to you today with prayerful hearts, Lord. And as you know, our brother has surgery that is coming Wednesday. Lord, we pray that you would be with the doctors as they operate on Doug and everything goes well, Lord. We ask that you would Heal Doug, lead, let them, let them do a successful surgery. Let everything go well as it should, as it's meant to, as they mean it for it to go, Lord. That, Lord, we just need Doug with us so much. We pray that you would be with him and give him speedy healing, Lord, and be with him always. And Lord, we just come to you now and we ask everyone here to pray for Doug. Pray for Doug this week, Lord, uh, everyone. God hears your prayers. God will answer our prayers. Please do not forget to do this this week. 
be with Doug, be with Doug's family. Doug's family needs you, Lord, and be with them as he goes through this. All of this we ask in your son Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 God bless you, Doug. I'll be back. <laughs> Let's continue with our worship service with some some singing. Get all excited. Get all excited, go tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. I said, get all excited, go tell everybody that. Jesus Christ is King. I said, get all excited. Go tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. Jesus Christ is still the King of Kings, King of Kings. You talk about people, you talk about things that really aren't important at all. You talk about weather, you talk about problems we have here at home and abroad. But friend, I'm excited about a solution for the world. I'm gonna shout and sing. And it's Jesus Christ is still the King of Kings, King of Kings. Get all excited, go tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. I said, get all excited, go tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. I said, get all excited. Go tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. Jesus Christ is still the King of Kings. King of Kings. Amen. are the days of Elijah declaring the word of the Lord and these are the days of your servant Moses righteousness being restored and though these are days of great trial of famine and darkness and sword still we are the voice in the desert crying prepare ye the way of the Lord behold he comes riding on the clouds shining like the sun and the trumpet calls so lift your voice it's a year of jubilee and out of Zion's hill salvation comes these are the days of Ezekiel the dry bones becoming as flesh and these are the days of your servant David rebuilding a temple of praise and these are the days of the harvest the fields are as white in the world and we are the laborers in your vineyard declaring the word of the Lord behold he comes riding on the clouds shining like the sun at the trumpet call so lift your voice it's a year of jubilee and out of zion's hill salvation comes amen amen we're looking forward to jesus coming When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore And the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there When the roll is called up yonder When the roll is called up yonder When the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share. Then all of life is over and the hope beyond the skies and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll 
is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder i'll be there Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through His infinite mercy. His child and forever I am. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed, His child and forever I am. I know I shall see in his beauty the king in whose law I delight, who lovingly guardeth my footsteps and giveth me songs in the night. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed, his child and forever I am. Amen. It's good to be redeemed. We're going to move down to the last song in our worship here. Guess what you get to do? You get to sing the scripture reading because this is what the sermon's going to center in today. It's going to be dealing with prayer. into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for assisting in that reading. I've got to do this because I've forgotten it two weeks in a row. Somebody lost their front door key to the church. And if you are the one, please see me about it. And, but come and take it off the pulpit here and then come and see me about it, okay? Uh, we try to make keys available for anyone that needs them. And this one is even labeled. It says church on it. <laughs> so I want us to have just a brief moment of prayer. And then we will uh, proceed with a study of the scripture that we just shared together from Matthew, the sixth chapter. Father, we come to you as a people needing your blessing and your help. We live in a land that is headed in a downhill fashion away from you. We pray for revival. We pray that you will bless us with a turnaround. We pray that you will help us to open our hearts to be part of that revival of this land. 
We thank you, Father, for the life that you have given us in Jesus Christ. Bless us now as we think in terms of how we can communicate with you in a greater way. We pray in the name of Christ. Amen. I was reminded of this by my son the other night. There was a, a little girl, and she said, I know what God's other name is. And her mother said, Really? You do, huh? Yes. Howard be thy name. <laughs> Sometimes we don't get it any better than she did. Sometimes we don't just get it right. Understand this in the first place. What we call the Lord's Prayer is not the Lord's Prayer. He was not praying. He was teaching. He said, after this manner, pray. He said, this is the way to do it. And he gave us a perfect outline. So if you want to have this prayer in your mind, say, our Father who art in heaven, Father, I, I love you. I appreciate you. You can just add on to that and keep doing that. And it becomes a great outline for being able to come before God in a way that you can be absolutely certain is good and acceptable in God's eyes. Uh, have you ever heard people talk about having a father-son talk? Those things have all kinds of interesting facets to them. Uh, I, I told a couple of my friends that we had a, a talk, my dad and me, about some trouble that those guys and I had gotten into and my dad caught us. And uh, they I was old. I was maybe 10, 11 years old. And one of them said, you had a face-to-face -face talk with your dad? I said, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He insisted on it. When the other one said, is it heart-to-heart -heart that you were into? And I said, no. It was more the hand of knowledge to the seat of learning. <laughs> We sometimes miss out in the father-son talk thing, getting down the things that we should be saying. Use our study today to cover that. We're going to be reading from the various verses in the 9th to the 15th verses of Matthew 6, if you'll kind of have them in readiness, if you want to follow along that way. We need to say this. I don't think we know how to pray as well as we should. And I don't think we pray as often and as much as we should. And I think if we did both of those things, there would be a difference around us and in the land. And I include myself in that. I include myself in that. I think we need to be in prayer. So we need to take it to the Lord in prayer. and. The first thing that we come up with here, guess what the first point is? You can say it. Our Father who art in heaven. <laughs> That's where it all starts, with Him. And we address Him. He is a spirit. He is visible in heaven. And He is going to be very visible on this earth in the form of Jesus returning we were singing about earlier. We need to address Him as our Father. This allows us to have a picture in our minds of what our relationship to Him is. It's good to say, oh, great Creator, but get down to it. Get to relating to Him. Get to relating to Him as the one you love, the one you count on. And out of that will come His working in your life. He'll bless you in your life. Pray to your Father. Uh, when I was a kid, from time to time, I would try to put something over on my dad. Never worked out very well. <laughs> he seemed to know exactly what I'd been doing, and I couldn't figure out what it was. And then finally, one day, I said, Dad, how did you know I did that? He said, it's real easy, son. I know you. <laughs> and that's the one with whom we have to deal. He knows us. 
This means that we just probably ought to be completely honest with our Father in heaven. Think in terms of being honest. Our Father who art in heaven, this is the holy God of the universe. And we're talking with him. There's no need in cheating in our living. He knows when we've done that. We need to say, I need to correct this. What do I need to put into my life to take care of this? We need to be able to talk with him. And it should be a talk with him that's predicated on how we're relating to the rest of the world because he's our father. I don't know what your father was like, but I've been telling you already. My father insisted that I follow certain rules, that I did certain things. And he tried to look in on those things and make sure that I did. We need to be honest with him. We need to be honest. Don't cheat on your relationship with God. Keep talking with him. Start your day with him. Finish your day with him. Good way to fall asleep at night is just start praying and keep praying until you go to sleep. And when you wake up in the middle of the night, you maybe just wake up still praying. Who knows? But do keep praying. We need to deal with our loving Heavenly Father. Now, I have a little experience with fatherhood. I've had four foster kids that I helped rear. I've had, uh, how many kids do I have? <laughs> I have four. <laughs> and the three of them are still with us. One's gone to be with the Lord. But they, I liked to talk with them. I enjoy that. Uh, the drummer up here runs off to play softball during the warmer weather. And I, I like having him come tell me what he did. It lets me relive the old days, and uh, I, I'm, I'm glad to know how he's doing and how he's playing. He, he plays a lot like I did. He doesn't like to lose, and he plays hard. <laughs> he, and he comes home all skinned up a lot. <laughs> but I enjoy the visit, seeing his new war wounds and so forth. An interesting thing out of a conversation I had with my daughter about three or four years before she was taken to heaven, she said, uh, Daddy, she always called me Daddy. I kind of like that. It's more intimate than just, hey, Pop, or hey, Dad, and that's more like the boy's style. <laughs> but she, she said, Daddy, I noticed that you were letting and named the child, do this. And I never got to do that. And I said, well, why do you suppose? She said, well, I don't know. I said, did you ever ask? She said, eh? well, I, I never thought of that. She didn't have what she would like to have been doing because she didn't ask. And I know for sure, both by what I did with a couple of the boys and what I think and feel and believe, I would have said, yeah, go ahead, try it. Sometimes we have not because we ask not. We're asking our Father in heaven, the God of the whole world, the God of the whole universe. He can provide what we need. He can avoid giving us what we don't need. It is his world. But more than that, it is his kingdom. Pray, your or thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. This is the way we pray. This is the way we talk to him about his kingdom. You see... What do you have to have to have a kingdom? You have to have a king, and you have to have a territory that he reigns over. This is a kingdom. So when we pray, we pray for the kingdom, his kingdom. And as we pray for that kingdom, he will let it develop. If you want to see the kingdom grow, if you want to see the kingdom change, if you want to see the kingdom benefit, then pray, thy kingdom kingdom come. <coughs> In 
you need to be a citizen of the kingdom. It may or may not matter whether you have your name on a church roll. I believe if you're to be fully supportive of the kingdom, you need to do that. But the thing that matters is that you have a citizenship in the church, in the kingdom. It is Jesus' church. It is Jesus' kingdom. And he will bless us. It is his kingdom. Now, we lose track of what king means because we got rid of George way back there in the Revolutionary War, and then we won another war to be able to stay free. So we kind of miss what a king is. The king is absolute authority. He is the ultimate authority in everything. This is the church of Jesus Christ. It is ruled over by the king. We have no right to make decisions of what we want. We have no right to lobby for what we want unless we're lobbying him and making sure our will is coinciding with his will. If you pray about something long enough that way, he will start to reveal himself to you. There is no right decision as to what we want then. We must be doing what he wants. Start with the book. If it's not compatible with the book, he doesn't want it, and we don't want to be involved with it. He determines the membership then in the kingdom, and we, we must honor him. The kingdom has come. It has come. We need to live as people of the kingdom. And that takes precedence over my U.S. citizenship. Every time. All the time. So we need to be members of that kingdom, a part of that kingdom. And when the kingdom gathers, he said in, in Hebrews, the 10th chapter, the 25th verse, something that I think is important to us. He said, forsake not. That means don't fail to do what you need to be doing here. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, as is the habit of some. But encourage one another. That's what the church attendance is. It's an encouragement. Didn't you enjoy some encouragement out there? I mean, besides the donuts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it's, it's a thing that we have an opportunity to participate in. And we have an opportunity to share in the kingdom of God. I'm concerned not so much whether your name's on the roll book here, but I am extremely concerned that your name is on the roll book in heaven and that you're participating in kingdom activities. Now, thy will be done on earth. Now, that has some meaning. God doesn't take control and force us. Remember, there was the Garden of Eden. God gave man the choice, and man blew the choice. Remember the world of Noah's day? He had to wash it all away and start afresh. We need, we need to pray and ask God to bless us that his will is done on earth. And that means starting first, thy will be done in Bill Meyer. In you. Put your name in the blank. It is his kingdom. This makes a difference for those of you who overslept this morning. It makes a difference when you're starting to want to oversleep and you say, thy will be done. You can't roll over then and pull the covers up over your head. You need to get up and get moving and get to church. Everything we do in life needs to be related to him having his will Done, And as we do his will, we'll find more and more and more and more blessing. Sometimes we neglect this. Is God's will being done? Is it being done? There was a, a man who was 
seeing some shepherds for the first time, and they were bringing in flocks from all different directions, and the flocks were all coming together at a water hole. And they gathered up there, and when they got there, he, he said, how in the world did you sort all of them out? He said, man, you got woolies everywhere, and they're mixing and mingling and everything. How do you sort them out? And one of the shepherds said, they always follow their shepherd unless they're sick. It's the only reason that they wouldn't. You got a sick sheep if he doesn't follow. They hear the shepherd's voice and they follow. We need to follow Jesus Christ. We need to follow him intently doing his will. Give us this day our daily bread. And this speaks to us in this day. We care, but we don't worry about tomorrow. When did he say we should ask for the bread? Today. God, give me a good lunch, you know. That's cool. But don't say, God, I'd like a guarantee that I get supper. Or, God, I want to guarantee that I'm going to have something really good to eat tomorrow at 6 p.m. No. No. Give us this day our daily bread. Sometimes we forget that we're supposed to be living on faith. We're supposed to be directed by our faith. And this is saying our daily bread comes from our God. This is the way that things work out. Now, Sometimes people listen to sermons and they think that, you know, I've got to do it. I've got to gather it. I've got to make the changes that, that do everything. And to some degree, you have to make some changes if they're out of, out of kilt with what God wants. There was a preacher. I have a Louisiana friend that always told this story. He said, there's this preacher, Brother Bo Bridge, got up and spoke and one of the members listened, and he said to them in the sermon, he said, who has the finest house in town? And he was bearing down on the evils of drink. And he said, the bartender who drives the finest car in this town. The bartender who wears the finest clothes in this town. The bartender. A few days later, the preacher ran into one of his members who listened to that with all his heart. He said, brother, that sermon was, was wonderful. It changed my life. He said, oh, have you quit drinking? He said, no, sir. No, sir. I bought myself a bar and I'm the bartender. <laughs> if you get something like that out of this, you got the wrong message. We should be looking, looking to discover what God wants in our lives and have faith for him to provide it and to provide it through ways that we should be using that are in accord with his will. Because I'm sure that that preacher was mortified that he created another bartender in a sermon. It was not intended that way. Let God take care of every day. Lay up your treasure in heaven, the scriptures say. Tomorrow may never come. Live today and find blessing with God. My preacher's name when I was a kid growing up, the whole time that I was growing up, was Jim Rutherford. They called him Brother Jim. And I remember a story he told. I can't forget this. I was maybe eight years old when I heard it, and I still remember it. Brother Jim was preaching part-time. He'd given up his real job, <laughs> and uh, he was living off of the preaching, and he was working part-time in a haberdashery. And he was depending on God. But he came to church one Sunday morning and he reached in his pocket and he took out every bit of money he had in the world. It was 56 cents. I'll never forget the amount. 56 cents. And he said, God, I don't know what to do. And the collection plate came by and he dropped 56 cents in it. He said, God, I want you 
to give me my daily bread. I want you to bless me and my family. The next morning, he got a phone call from a place that he worked occasionally. They'd had a huge shipment of hats come in, and they were having a giant sale, and they didn't feel they were going to have enough sales. So he went down there and went to work. Got paid every day for it, had food all week. Give us this day our daily bread. Depend on our God, and he will provide. Forgive us our debts. Now, I know there's all this thing about forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us because that's the way I learned it. But trespass is a word that comes up short. The trespass says, I just stepped there in a place that I didn't belong, maybe on somebody's grass where it said, keep off the grass. And as soon as you hear them yell, you step off and it's all over. A debt is a long-term problem if you develop too many of them. Got the idea? Forgive us our debts. It's more obligatory. We have debts to people. We have debts to share the gospel. We have debts to share the things we have been provided with that we can help them with. We have debts or obligations. We also have debts regarding forgiveness. Forgive us our debts, what? As we forgive those who, to whom, whom, who owe us, who are in debt to us. Pardon me, I stumbled over that one by trying to double quote it. In Verses 14 and 15, it's good to, to hear this, I think, just like it comes right out of the book. If you forgive men their transgressions, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men, then your Father will not forgive your transgressions. And he uses transgressions, not trespasses. We need, we need to recognize our obligation to God, our obligation to follow Him. How hard is it to forgive? There was a preacher made a call at the, the hospital. He came into the room and Lady Church, there in bed, and she, she had both legs bandaged up, partly sticking out from under the covers. And she had been attacked by a dog and bitten pretty badly. And they didn't know but what the dog had rabies. And she was sitting there and she had a little tablet. And she was just writing away. And he said, well, what, what, what are you writing? Are you, are you concerned about a last will and testament or something like that? She said, no, no, not at all. I'm writing down the name of everybody I'm going to bite if I have rabies. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of us approach life that way. But forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors is what we should always do. And then deliver us from evil. As we pray, do you believe God can? Do you believe he can do the things that need to be done? Have faith that he can. And then act on your faith. Faith without works is what? Yeah. Dead. That's right. It's dead, being alone. We need to live what we say we're going to live. That means that we have to forgive. Oh my, sometimes that's hard. Even if we'd like to bite people. It means that we have to forgive and flee evil. We have to avoid the things that people do and people force into our presence that are wrong. We have to be willing to stand up about those things. When you're invited to do something wrong, you need to be able to stand up. How many people pursue evil instead of fleeing from it. Sometimes we have a little dark place inside of our head where we're working on something that we shouldn't be doing. 
that needs to go before God and we need to repent of it before we ever invest in it so that he can bless us. Forgive us as we forgive. We must forgive other people. Now, this is a promise. This is a promise that comes to us. If you forgive people their debts, then you can stand and say, now I understand how God feels when he forgives me my debts. And there's a promise that he will forgive if we forgive. So, because I have need, <laughs> I'm willing to forgive anyone and everyone for anything that they do wrong. Simply because I know what my relationship with him is to be and what I need from him. And I need the forgiveness as every one of us do. What can I do to have a forever outlook? Because this thing concludes this way. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thine is the kingdom. We've covered that. And the power. He is the all-powerful God. He's the one that we can depend upon. And the glory. He deserves the glory. He deserves the praise. And the glory forever. Forever. When I come across that word, how many things follow forever? Nothing. <laughs> forever goes on. Forever. We need forever in our lives. We need to live with it in our minds. We need to recognize that there is a, the days of Elijah. There is a coming again of Jesus Christ. We need to be filled with awe and reverence. You know, I can remember riding down the highway. And as I rode down the highway, I looked and I saw signs. They used to have a lot of them. Sometimes they were up on a board. Sometimes they were a little sign that was made and stuck along a fence line. Sometimes they were written on a rock. But they talked about, where will you spend eternity? That was the question. And that's still the question. Where will you spend eternity? Where are you going to spend forever? We have we have a need to give ourselves to God and in prayer, pray about our forever. Lord, help me live so that I can live with you forever. Help me walk in your grace so I can know you forever. This is what we must do. This is the way we must live. Will you live as if you're living forever. We need to have a forever outlook. And we learn that by praying. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. I want to be there when we're celebrating forever while those who don't know Jesus are unfortunately going to be not celebrating anything except enduring what their sentence has been. Forever. Live for forever. It'll bring your life into perspective. We're going to extend an invitation. It's an opportunity to make a decision for Jesus Christ. If you're here and you want to make that decision, come down and we'll let you share that with the congregation. For those of you at home, use the texting, use the prayer request. Either one of them will get through and you'll get a call back. And we, we believe in the, the texting method as part of our shepherding. So for you out there who may have a need, please, please contact us. And we will deal with you and try to be a blessing to you in whatever your need is. Let's... Let's sing the song I think is appropriate for any time that we're doing an invitation. Lead me to Calvary. Won't you come as we sing? King of my life.
life I crown thee now, thine shall the glory be. Lest I forget thy thorn crowned brow, lead me to Calvary. Lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget We're going to be led to Calvary. If you have a decision you want to make and you didn't have opportunity to do it now, please contact us. Please do that. We're going to just spend a moment singing about Jesus as he comes to relate in our lives. He's God with us. That's the way it starts. We're going through three little choruses here. But they're to lead us to Calvary where we remember Jesus' death, we remember his burial, we remember his resurrection, we remember how much he bore for us. As we participate in this, let's sing this, we'll have a brief prayer as we're taking the communion. His name is wonderful. His name is Emmanuel, God with us. And I thank God he's with us in a very special way right now. As we meet around his table, because that's where he instituted this, we remember, first of all, that his body was broken for us. Lord, we thank you for what you sacrificed on Calvary. As we take the bread, we remember your body was sacrificed for us. And Lord, we are thankful that you have given us a covenant and your blood was shed so that we can have that covenant and that relationship with you. And so as we partake of this drink, we do it to remember your love, your sacrifice, and the covenant relationship we have with you. In Jesus' precious name we pray and participate.
I appreciate y'all being here. I appreciate your attention. By next week, I'm going to be able to see my notes better. I got my glasses back. I sent them in to have them welded together. They're, they were titanium. These are not the glasses. These are the ones that I wore for years. Guess what? They sent them back, and night before last, I was cleaning the lenses, and they broke again. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go down and get a different pair of glasses. <laughs> but it, th these were real good until about a year or so ago. And uh, they're almost real good now. <laughs> we're going to uh, be dismissed. And I, I pray that you will have uh, a good week standing up for Jesus Christ, for the one who is our Lord, our Savior, and the answer to all the problems that we've got in our lives and in this world and in this nation. So as we go out, let's go out with his name on our lips. We're going to sing about that after our, our closing prayer here. Father, we thank you for Jesus, the ultimate gift that anybody could have been given. We thank you for his love that he would give his life. We thank you, Father, that he gave us the Spirit who walks with us in our daily lives. Help us, Father, to become more and more aware of Jesus' presence through the Spirit. Bless us, Father, so that we may serve you that people may see Jesus in us. And we pray in the name of Christ, our loving, living Lord. Amen. Amen. I've got a long, long way to journey. My life is not my own. I've got a lot of places I must go before God calls me home. I've got to go tell it on the mountain. I've got to go tell it in the street. I've got to go, go, go tell everybody. My Jesus is so sweet. Go tell everybody.